Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. And a special greetings to my sisters and brothers, students and youth. They are truly the hope for the future. They are the bright future to, to, to us in human rights, justice, equality, and to live in peace in all over the world. Please let me greet you. Peace be upon you. <coughs> My name is Lubna Ahmed Al Hussein. I'm a, from Sudan. Journalist. I'm a journalist and an author. You may have heard, ladies and gentlemen, about my story. And the police arrested me in a restaurant because I was wearing pants. And I am wearing pants right now. The world was surprised when I heard about my story through media. I was not the first or the last woman to be arrested in Sudan for trousers. I wasn't even number 10,000. In the year 2008, 43,000 women were arrested. I repeat, 43,000 women. Not from in all of Sudan. This is only in Khartoum because of their clothing, according to the head of Sudanese police. And that's the closest thing to a statistical, official statistics. I was not the woman who suffered most in, in my country. There are diverse for, forms of <coughs> violence against women, physical and moral, practiced by groups, individuals, or even government institutions. I was the one, however, who shouted the loudest. I cried in the name of 10,000 and even millions of oppressed women who did not have a voice. I said no so that the entire world can hear it. The government that is ruling now in Sudan, the Bashir's government that arrived to power in 1989 through a coup d'etat, and this coup d'etat was a cover for the so-called Islamist movement that wanted to impose its own ideology through laws that it called Islamic. Uh, of course, women were the main target. Um, as women's rights and freedoms were repressed in all their forms. Despite that these uh, legislations and laws are actually against the, the culture of Sudan because it's a multi-ethnic and multicultural uh, country. In 1920, until 1920, this was the traditional dressing for single young girls in northern Sudan, Muslim northern Sudan. And until 1940, uh, this was the situation. Uh, this woman represents our grandmothers. So what would happen if she came back today with this kind of clothes? Uh, this, this also uh, tradition survives in southern uh, uh, in Sudan. The other aspect is not only repression of women because of uh, their clothing, but also their <coughs> firing from um, jobs as the government, the local, uh, fired 350,000 go uh, government employees, most of whom were women. What was their crime? They didn't cover their heads in the way the government deemed appropriate, so they were classified as enemies of the state, uh, despite not having any political affiliations. However, not all of Sudan's women are state employees. There are women who farm their land and who and who work as farmers. Unfortunately, because of the war in Darfur, uh, these women were expelled and had to leave their villages, uh, went to refugee camps or to the big cities in Sudan. The only job that they can find in the cities is selling uh, tea in the streets. 
Even though they are relentlessly pursued by the police with no legal mandate whatsoever, there is a daily war between them and the police. <coughs> and again, there is no law that prohibits uh, the sale of tea in, in the streets. These women are made targets and uh, they are being arrested and taken to police station. And the fact that they are breadwinners of their families or even nursing babies um, is not taken into consideration by the police. And they would be even released without facing any charges or um, put on trial. This woman avoided the police by going to Khartoum's outskirts but the problem is that who who can afford to buy tea in the um, slums of Khartoum? Uh, most of you know here that the Sudanese government used rape as a weapon of war in Darfur. Uh, the Darfur uh, case is a long case. I, I wouldn't have time to talk about it, but I will talk to you about rape, not in Darfur, but in Khartoum. This girl's name is Shema. She was a year and seven months old. She was gang raped. By the way, Sudanese law that they call Islamic law, and I insist that they that they call Islamic, is the one that punishes women for wearing pants with 40 lashes, punishes a rapist or a little girl with only one month in prison. This girl di died because she was gang raped. It seems that the message if you wanted justice is to die while you've been raped because then the crime will be become one of murder and there are tens of children who got raped weekly and monthly if they were children but if they were adult women they wouldn't even dare complain or file a complaint because Sudanese law would imprison her for four months. Imagine that you will be imprisoned for being raped. She will be turned into the, the, the criminal that will be punished. Here's another sample of the horrors visited on Sudanese women. There's female genital mutilation in Sudan. The laws that prohibit wear women from wearing pants does not prohibit female genital mutilation. And Sudan has the, uh, the one of the highest rates in the world uh, for um, what they call circumcision. 91% of women face that. Uh, despite the fact that there's a, um, a law in the books from 1947 from the, the times of the British Empire, but when this government, when it came to power, it actually um, removed that, that, that law and repelled it. And in fact, the non-governmental organizations had campaigned tirelessly to educate the public about um, the problems of FGM, but some Islamists, however, hit back by say, claiming that um, uh, FGM is accepted Islamically. And by the way, Sudan is the fourth country in the world in terms of death of women during deliveries, which is uh, uh, related to um, FGM. Sana is a 17-year-old girl. And you can see her story shows you uh, uh, many of the forms of violence, the, the marriage of minors, her father forcibly married her. Inequality is seen also through her case because she was deprived from education. And thirdly, she was married off despite her will and despite having refused to, to get married and she had refused to move to her husband's house. Her, her husband gave her brother uh, a bottle with, with a liquid that he claimed that, that this was a blessed water that was blessed by a local cleric with Quranic verses and that he asked him to um, splash it on his sister's uh, face during uh, morning prayer uh, in order for her to go back to her, her, her home. But her, the brother was 
in shock when he discovered that he was actually spraying his sister's face with um, acid. And this, these are the laws that uh, Sudan claims is Islamic and is related to religion. It shows you the abuse of religion the government is responsible for. Sylvia was born in 1983. She is a Christian from southern Sudan. Uh, actually, within seven uh, seven uh, months, she will be voting uh, to decide the fate of southern Sudan, whether to stay uh, unified or would be uh, break away in a new country. She was lashed like tens of thousands of women and teenagers, not because she was wearing pants, but because she was wearing a skirt in broad daylight. But the police decided that it was too short for its states. And actually, she received 50 lashes, unlike what is stipulated by the law which is 40 lashes and of course I don't know uh, how, how she would uh, she would possibly vote for staying with, um, uh, within Sudan um, in the referendum um, for the independent southern Sudan it's uh, actually there was another girl uh, a Christian girl who was with me amongst the group arrested and when we entered in court she wet herself that's what made me really decide to stand up and fight and uh, and say no to these unjust laws and by the way uh, many people can avoid these uh, punishments if, if they are well connected or are rich but the but I decided to fight in the name for uh, in the name of the poor and the and those who have no connections and whatsoever. And by the way, on the day I was put on trial, uh, many women um, came out uh, to support me and because they wanted to protest this law um, that condemns a rapist to only to one month in prison and would have a woman lash for wearing pants. That's what these women turned out to support. Uh, these are women are not carrying weapons. They are just there with papers and, and, and with their voice. And they were challenging the state and the brutality. And the struggle continues. But unfortunately, the op oppression continues. At the end, even if the, if the battle is still long, I am confident that we'll be victorious. Uh, the, bat the battle is not for pants. It's for personal choice. It's for human rights, for freedom and justice and equality between men and women and, and for justice to reign in our societies. And I'd like to thank the, the organizers of the Freedom uh, Forum and my brothers and sisters in this room to your students. And peace upon you all and thank you very much. <laughs>